Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. When we read about the Raja Dahir and Muhammad bin Qasim episode in history, we often come across a, f- a fact that most of our knowledge traces itself back to a book called Chachnama. This raises the question what exactly is this Chachnama? Chachnama is the only surviving and therefore the most reliable source we have on the history of Sindh. Most historians cite it for the history of Muhammad bin Qasim and Raja Dahir. Many people wish to know who wrote it and how did he manage to do it. Our story begins in 1216 when an Arabian resident of Uch in southern Punjab named Ali Kofi became curious to know the history of his hometown. This led him to meeting an Arabian origin nobleman named Ismail bin Ali as saqfi Ismail was a clansman of Muhammad bin Qasim and the descendant of Aror's first Muslim governor whom Muhammad bin Qasim himself had appointed. His family possessed a manuscript which was written by his ancestor. It was in Arabic language and it contained details about the Muslim conquest. We do not know what title this manuscript had, if it ever had one, but Ali Kofi had it translated into Persian. And after compiling it with some other sources, he wrote his book which is now known as Chachnama, but its original title was in Persian language and it was The Highway of Religion and the Glory of the high and great chief, the eye of the kingdom. Ali Kofi translated the manuscript into Persian because it was a much more popular language in literature in those days. He also compiled some other sources as mentioned earlier and created the book which is now called Chachnama. The Chachnama has different names in different languages. In Sindhi language it is known as Tariq Fateh Nama Sindh which means history of the conquest of Sindh. In Arabic sources, it is called Tariq al-Hind was Sindh, which means history of Hind and Sindh. So historically, much of what is now Hind, much of India basically was Hind. And what is now Pakistan, most of it was called Sindh at that time. But there were some exceptions. For example, some areas weren't really considered parts of these regions, but majority were. Like for example, Balochistan is not Sindh and mal area like Lakshadweep, I don't really think it was considered Hind at that point, but most of it was, so there were some exceptions. The Chachnama is the most popular title given to this book, and it is originally in Persian. It means history of Chach, and even in Urdu, we use the same name. In case you're wondering whether this manuscript was the only source for the Chachnama, the answer is, Kind of, but not exactly. If we divide the events in the Chachnama into two categories, you will see that the first category is the events which took place before Muslim conquest. They start with the Rai dynasty and end with the Sindhi pirates incident, and these were gathered from multiple local Sindhi sources, which are not really known to us. The second category is the events which took place since the Muslim conquest from the Sindhi pirates incident till the death of Muhammad bin Qasim where the book ends and this is where the manuscript was used. There are some weird parts of the Chachnama as well where it tends to contradict itself. For instance, in one place it says one of Raja Dahir's queens, Rani Ladi, committed suicide while a few chapters later it says that Muhammad bin Qasim married her. This is very confusing because you cannot live and die at the same time. You either die or live. But what happened to the queen, the truth is, nobody knows, even today. People might ask whether there is any alternative to this Chachnama or not. Well, in a way, there is. We have three other sources, two of which were written by Sindhi Muslim historians in the Middle Middle Ages era and also during the Mughal Empire's time. These are... Tofatul Kiram by Mir Ali Sher of Tata and Tariq e Sain, commonly known as Tariq e Masumi by Masum Shah of Sakhar. During the Abbasid Caliphate era, a Persian Muslim historian named Al Balazuri wrote a book called Kitab Futuhul Buldan, which contains a part dedicated to the history of Sindh. And although there are some differences, for example, these sources tell different stories about the death of Muhammad bin Qasim, for example. 
but most of the information is from the Chachnama. The fundamentals are from there. Some people wish to know about the sources used and can we check how authentic these sources were? Well, unfortunately, the answer is no. But why? The answer is because the manuscript in Arabic language which was possessed by the Asakfi governor family is now lost. The Persian version was translated to English by a Sindhi scholar of Georgian descent, Mirza Kalich Beg Faridun Beg in the 19th century. We still have this version and the, we also have the translated version in Sindhi and Urdu languages as well as in Arabic. But it's translated translation of Ali Kofi's version, not the real version, which was also in Arabic. As for the local Sindhi sources, they are not really specified and a proportion of them is believed to have been from oral traditions. And this means we can't really trace them back because most people are now dead. Almost everyone should be dead logically from that era. Many archives were also lost when the Mongols sacked Baghdad and burned down its famous library. So if there were any documents available to Ali Kufi at that time, most of them are unfortunately not available to us at all. Now you might be wondering how did Sindh contribute to the Islamic world? How did the Sindhi Muslim dynasties rise and how did the Sindhis become Muslims? Well, this is what we're going to be discussing in the next episode of our series History of Sindh. So make sure you press the bell icon and subscribe to our channel so you're notified when the next episode comes out. For now, I would like to thank all of you for watching. A special thanks to the acknowledgements you can see on my screen and here are my references. Also, I will leave a link in the description to the Chachnama in case you want to read it.